little little ASMR for you. Mate. Don't even see that, but that's the mate. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to yet another video. Today we're talking about lenses, not uh, what lens you should buy next, but why you should invest in good lenses versus uh, the lens that came with your camera. Why does uh, this lens cost more than this lens? This lens is a 24-105 Canon RF mount, and this lens is also a 24-105 uh, Canon RF mount. This lens here, $600. Also comes with the camera. Most of the time, it comes with the camera. This lens here, $1,600. Why would you spend $1,600 on a lens that essentially is the same as this lens? Well, let's find out. Hello and welcome back to yet another video. Today, like I said in the intro, we are talking about lenses and why you should be investing in good lenses. Now, this is not a beginner's video. That video might come later because, I don't know, I like doing things out of order. I don't make a photography basic video because photography basics is really complicated. Now, getting into photography, super complicated. I will make a photography basic, camera basics video eventually, but this is uh, a... This isn't it. There's plenty of great videos on camera basics and all the things that you need to learn to understand this video 100% through. So, you know, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've watched a bit of those videos already, or maybe you already know a bit about cameras and lenses, but this is not a beginner's video. Uh, I will do my best to explain everything that you need to know for this video too come together, but there might be some things that I just gloss over because I assume you know it already. You're on YouTube, you're probably a nerd like me that watches these sort of videos. The only difference is I'm now making them, so uh, that's uh, that's fun. So today we've got two lenses here. One is the kit lens that came with my Canon R6. The focal length is 24 to 105, which is a really good middle ground. It's a great middle child between 16 to 35 and 70 to 200. This is a great middle ground. It it's basically covers you for wide angle photography and landscapes to portrait photography and getting close to your subject without getting close to your subject because it's got that zoom, it's got that reach at 105. It's not a bad lens, if I do say so myself. This lens on the other hand is exactly the same focal length, 24 to 105, but the key difference is it's got a red ring. It has a red ring that's around the control ring. That's it's a red ring around the control ring. That's the best way I can describe it. All Canon L series lenses can be identified by the red ring. So if you see someone with a camera and it's got a red ring around the lens, you know they're not joking. They're not playing around. They're not your mom trying to take family photos of their vacation. These guys, they know what they're doing. Or maybe they don't and they just bought it because they thought it's more expensive, it's gonna get better photos, which is partly true, partly not true. More on that in camera basics. Hopefully, coming in 2021. I shouldn't promise things that I can't guarantee to deliver one. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. So, like I said before, this lens here cost about $600, and it also comes with a camera, so if you just buy the camera with this lens, it costs you nothing. This lens, on the other hand, I forked out $1,600, yeah. Why would you do that? Why would you spend extra money on something you essentially already have VPOP? Let's discuss that. Now, for those who have used a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera or any camera in general, you know that when you zoom in, you generally start to lose f-stop numbers or the f-stop number gets higher, but you're losing light. It's complicated. So aperture is represented by an f-stop. This f-stop might be f4, which is what this lens does. It's f4 when zoomed all the way out. However, as you slowly start to zoom the lens and get more of that telephoto reach, the f-stop number, the value climbs. So it goes from f4 to f7.1. You can't go back to f4 once you're zoomed all the way out unless you zoom all the way back in. Does that make sense? It made sense when I said it. If it didn't make sense, take a shot, rewind the video, it'll make sense. F-stop number is low at 24. F-stop number is high when zoomed out at 105. Now, for those who don't know what the f-stop number is, the f-stop number essentially determines your aperture. 
aperture are blades that are inside the lens. These blades can open wide to let in a lot of light or they can close down and let in very little light. The aperture blades can go from super wide when it's dark to let in as much light through this lens and to hit the sensor to closing down to say f8, f11 when it's super bright so less light can pass through the lens and hit the sensor which means your image isn't going to be overexposed. But with cameras you can also adjust your shutter speed and ISO so there's, a, there's more variables but in layman's term that's kind of how cameras work. So you might be thinking, well, that might be a good thing if it's a super bright day and I'm zoomed all the way out at 105 and the aperture value goes up to f7.1, that's letting in less light, which means I can get a better exposure when it's super bright. And yes, you are correct. You will still be able to get a really good exposure on a super bright day. F-stop is at 7.1. You might not have to bump your eyes so much. You might have to reduce your shutter speed a bit, but essentially on a bright day, f7.1, that's not too bad. But here's where the real kicker comes in. Once you enter, say, a studio, or if you enter a venue that you're shooting, and the lighting's very poor, there's not much light, and you didn't bring a flash, you didn't bring external light, and you have to work with the natural light that's in the room, or the daylight that's coming through the windows. So in a dark room, you might be able to see fairly clearly, but your camera's really gonna struggle unless you bump the ISO up. Either that, or you lower the shutter speed, or, like we've been talking about, you lower the f-stop and increase that aperture to let in more light through the lens. So once you zoom in at 105 on this lens and, it, and the aperture has to be a minimum of 7.1, you're not letting in that much light. And then you're gonna have to compromise by bumping the ISO, lowering the shutter speed, it's, it's a juggling act. With an L-series lens, typically, typically, not all L-series lenses, but most L-series lenses, the only L-series lenses that I think are an exemption from this rule is the really high-powered telephoto ones at 100 to 500, but even then, they still have pretty low constant apertures or very low apertures in general compared to the cheaper counterparts. So what makes this lens so much more expensive, apart from drawing a red ring around the lens, is that it has a constant aperture. So when it's zoomed out at 24, the f-stop is at f which means it can let in a lot of light and you're good to go. But once you zoom this lens all the way out to 105, the f-stop remains f4. It doesn't creep up to f7.1. You still get the exact same amount of light being let in through the apertures. The aperture doesn't close up, it remains constant. And that is one of the main reasons why this lens costs more than this lens. Now you might be wondering why is a constant aperture important? Well, if you're photographing a live band or an event and you, you want to get a wide shot of the guitarist playing along with all his bandmates, dialed in your settings, you're at f Four, you take the shot, it's a great shot. But let's say you wanna zoom in and just get the guitarist. You wanna cut out everyone else, you wanna zoom in to that 105 you have on your lens to really cut out the other band members. You wanna just isolate a nice portrait of the guitarist. Well, on the kit lens that cost a lot less and is far cheaper, once you zoom in to 105, you stop down about three stops of light. You went from f4, which can let in a bit of light, now you're all the way up at f7.1, which cuts out a lot of light. So now you have to compensate for that loss of light and you have to either adjust your shutter speed or bump your ISO, which may result in more grain. Higher end cameras now, they're getting better at noise reduction and less grain at higher ISOs, but still, it's something that you will run into. I photographed events with this lens and it was fine. I didn't mind it, but it was kind of annoying that at the wide angle, I could have my ISO at 3200 to 6400, depending on my shutter speed. But then once I wanted to zoom in to 105, I had to bump the ISO to 124,000, and that's, that's a big jump. That's where you start to introduce the risk of grain. Now, if your image is exposed properly, it's mitigated, but it's still something that might be an issue. Now, if you're a casual shooter, you don't really care about this sort of thing. But if you're a professional shooter and you're trying to get the most high quality image and, and we tend to try and shoot at lower ISO so the image isn't so grainy because that cannot look professional, that's when you want to go for something like an L-series lens where you get that constant aperture, you can have that lower f-stop. Now, this isn't the most expensive lens by any means. There are more expensive. There are 24 to 70s which are f2.8 all the way through. They have a constant aperture of f2.8 and that's why they get even more expensive. It's because at that wide out aperture, you're letting in a ton of light. You're getting a nice depth of field and it's constant. So from 24 to 70, it's a constant f2.8. 
That's why these lenses are more expensive. Leapop, is that the only reason why these lenses are more expensive? Well, no. These RF lenses especially, they come with a separate control ring. If for those who don't know, Canon's new RF lenses, they have this control ring. You've got your zoom ring, you've got your focus ring, and now you've got this new one called your control ring. The control ring is just another dial essentially you can program. I've got mine programmed to ISO, so I've got my shutter, I've got my aperture, and then I've got ISO on the ring. This ring is separate from the ring on this cheaper lens, which has a control ring, yes, but it's uh, built into the focus ring. So there's a little switch on the side here, which allows you to switch from focus and control. So if you want it to be the control ring, it's the control ring. If you want it to be the focus ring, it's the focus ring. You can't have them both at the same time, and that's why this lens is also more expensive. It gives you that option to have the control ring and the focus ring as separate. They're both image stabilized. However, I do believe that the image stabilization on this lens is a little bit better than the image stabilization on this lens. This lens is also weather sealed. So on the edge around the connector, it has got a nice rubber ring which prevents dust and water from getting into your camera and destroying it, essentially. And if you have a weather sealed body like I do with the R6 or the R5 or a 5D or 1D or the EOS R, then match it with an L-series lens and you can run out into the rain and not worry that much about damaging your equipment because it's weather sealed, the lens is more durable than a non-L-series lens, which is just, it's nice. You invest $1,500 plus into a lens, you wanna know it's gonna last a fair while. That's another reason why these lenses are more expensive, bigger, heavier, because of the better stabilization, the constant aperture, the weather sealing, which is just a nice bonus to have. Another important element of these lenses is the glass construction. The glass and the elements all inside the lens, they are a lot better. They better at refracting light and controlling the light and they seem that they're sharper. They don't seem sharper, they are sharper. I take photos on this, I notice that they are considerably sharper than a photo taken on this. And that's nothing to do with digital sharpness, that's just the sharpness that this lens can produce. Because there's a difference between lens sharpness and digital sharpness, you wanna go for a sharper image through the lens instead of digital sharpening. This lens here, it didn't come with a lens hood. This was bought separately. L-series lenses all come with a lens hood. Now, I don't usually use a lens hood because I've never seen it necessary. The, the coating on the lens seems to stop a lot of the flaring, but you know, it's nice to have a more complete package than say the kit lens, which you had you have to buy a lens hood separate. It's a more complete package, and uh, that's why L-series lenses cost more. They can have a lower constant aperture, they have a constant aperture, they're weather sealed, they're more durable, they produce a sharper image, they're, they're, they're super cool. I could never go back to a non-L-series lens after shooting on an L-series lens. And that is why L-series lenses are so expensive and why you should invest in good gear because down the track, you could probably sell this lens for not maybe not exactly what you paid for. You might not be able to pay exactly 1500, but you could get close to that. These lenses hold their value a lot better than a non-L-series lens because, well, weather sealing, constant aperture, the higher in demand. For all the reasons that they benefit, that's what gives them more value. This lens here, you could try to sell it for maybe 400, maybe 300 used, but that's not much, especially considering that they start at 600. And if you can resell your old gear for a very similar price to what you paid for, I mean, you're not losing much. And if you are a professional who does photography or videography, then this lens essentially should be making you money. And that's all I've got for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. And uh, what's the takeaway? Invest in good glass if you can afford it. If you're a professional, definitely 100%. You know you have to invest in good glass. If you're not a professional, then maybe you just want better glass to mount to your camera and just take better photos. And maybe you just wanna be better at this craft that is so fun and I love and I'm just, ooh, I love it. So that is why L-Series lenses are expensive and beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. No, that's not my line. Have a good morning, evening, or night, whenever you're watching this, and then I will see you in the next one.